Hi, uh, I'm Shihasha. Uh, thank you, Professor Park, for the introduction. And I'll be presenting our paper, LOL KV, the logless linearizable RDMA-based key value storage system. This work was done in collaboration with uh, Ahmed al Quran, Professor Bernard Wong, and uh, Professor Samar al Kiswani from the University of Waterloo, as well as Virendra Marathe from Oracle Labs. Production quality key value stores uh, out there today, such as Log Cabin and CockroachDB, use leader based consensus protocols to ensure strong consistency. Some examples of such protocols are Raft and Paxos. Let's take a look at how some of these key value stores work. They typically consist of one leader and multiple followers or replicas. Each machine involved has an operation log as well as its own local key value store. Typically, a single thread is used to man both the operation log as well as the key value store. And uh, when client requests come in, they're usually served by the leader. Let's say in this case, a write operation comes in. It's appended to the local operation log. The leader then replicates this operation to the operation logs of the followers. And once acknowledgments are received from a majority of followers, it sends an acknowledgment to the client saying the operation has been committed. After which it applies the operation to its local key value store and periodically followers check their logs and do the same to their local key value stores. Now this design has quite a few shortcomings. The first is that it relies on log-based replication. That is, it uses the log to serialize operations, limiting concurrency and scaling. The second is that there's unnecessary data copying between the local key value stores and the operation logs. Uh, every replica is an active replica and it needs to apply the committed operation to its local key value store. So this results in wasted CPU cycles uh, repeating work. And like I said, a single thread is usually used to operate on both the log and the key value store. So to better utilize resources, uh, the key space is sharded into multiple shards and uh, multiple single threaded shards are deployed per machine to utilize all the available resources on each machine. So it would look something like this. This works usually well in uniform workloads, but when workloads are skewed, one shard tends to become overwhelmed with requests, whereas other shards are not utilized at all or maybe underutilized. And finally, with uh, RDMA, this can result in high resource fragmentation as uh, each shard requires a separate memory region. We present LOLKV, a new linearizable RDMA-based key value store, which addresses all of these shortcomings. LOLKV uses a novel logless replication scheme where we don't rely on the log to order operations. So that eliminates the first inefficiency. LOLKV combines the replication and application phases, uh, eliminating unnecessary data copying. All followers in LOLKV are passive, so there's no work repetition on uh, replicas. Finally, LOLKV uses a multi-threaded shard design, which eliminates the last two inefficiencies I've talked about. Let's look at uh, LOLKV's design and see how we achieve some of these. Uh, similar to previous systems that we talked about, LOLKV is also a leader-based system. We have one leader and multiple replicas. There are two main components in LOLKV, the storage and worker threads. The storage itself consists of a segment store and a hash table, which I'll talk about in the following slides. Uh, LOLKV is an RDMA-based system, and we use UD for communication between uh, clients and the leader, and RC for communications between replicas. So let's take a look at the design goals for both worker threads as well as the storage and see what we wanted to achieve. With worker threads, we had two design goals in mind. One is to ensure scalability with a highly concurrent design. And the second was to avoid sharding the key space among threads like current systems do. So to do that, LOLKV employs multiple worker threads, each of which come with their own RDMA resources, including queue pads. Any thread can serve requests for any key, unlike current systems, which are sharded. Now, going to the storage, like I said, we, uh, it contains two components, the segment store and the hash table. The design goals for storage were also relatively simple. We wanted to minimize the overall RDMA communication in the system, as well as minimize contention between threads. So the segment store is basically a large region of memory, which is divided into contiguous segments. Each thread, a segment can store a set of object, and each thread can own, uh, so a segment can only be owned by one thread at a time. The important takeaway from this is that we only take one RDMA write to commit an operation to the segment store. Similarly, we have a hash table. The hash table is used to store pointers to objects in the storage or the segment store. 
we use a log-free linear probing based hash table in LOLKV, which is shared between all threads. And the other uh, important takeaway is that we need one RDMA write to apply an operation to the hash table. Now, let's take a look at how a put request is handled and maybe some of the details uh, will be clearer with that. We have uh, three phases um, where to handle put requests. The first is the replication phase, where when a client sends a request to a thread, it first uh, uh, pushes it into its local segment store on the leader and then replicates it to the segment stores of uh, followers or replicas. Then we have the local apply phase where the operation is applied to the hash table. Finally, we have the remote apply phase, which is uh, where the operations apply to the hash tables of followers. Uh, uh, like, like I've been saying before, we only have one RDMA write for replication, which is on the critical path, and we have another async RDMA write for application, but this is off the critical path. So let's take a look at the details of each phase. In the replication phase, uh, like I said, the thread will receive requests from the client. But before that, in this figure, we use gray blocks to indicate used uh, segment store entries and white ones to indicate free segment store entries. So here, uh, the client sends a put request to a thread on the leader. The thread finds an empty spot in one of the segment it, uh, segments it owns and copies the key and value from the request there. Each thread also has an increasing sequence number, which is used to order operations for that thread. So the thread inserts the sequence number as well into this entry. Now the thread goes ahead and uh, replicates this entry to the segment stores of followers using RDMA writes. And this is done using RC, like I said. And uh, once RDMA level acknowledgements are received, uh, the replication phase is considered complete and we move ahead to the local apply phase. Now here, uh, what we need to do is we need to add a pointer to this newly inserted segment store entry to the hash table. So we first hash the entry to find the correct key. Let's say in this case, this is the spot where we're supposed to insert it into the table, but as we can see, it's already used. So we begin linear probing, and we terminate probing with the first empty entry or an entry pointing to the same key that we find. So in this case, we find an empty spot here, and we go ahead and insert a pointer to the new entry we just put into the segment store. So this is the end of the local apply phase, and this is the end of the critical path. Uh, after this, we send uh, an acknowledgement to the client saying the operation is committed. Now, the leader also lazily applies uh, updates to the followers' hash tables with another uh, RDMA write, like I said. So this is the last remaining phase. Okay, so LOLKV is a complete system and it handles all the uh, scenarios shown in this slide. We have a, proof, a sketch proof for correctness in the paper and we also implement all of LOLKV's components using TLA plus and verify its uh, correctness. For further details, please refer to our paper. Let's take a look at a few interesting scenarios. One, the first being concurrent rights to different keys, and the second being concurrent rights to the same key, and see how these corner cases are handled. Okay, since multiple threads exist and can serve requests at the same time, uh, concurrent rights to different keys may end up going to different threads. And these are committed to the segment store in parallel, so both the new entries are created here in parallel. And they also need to be applied in parallel, but the hash table is shared between threads. So here, uh, let's say both uh, threads hash their keys and find that they need to start at the same spot, which is the second gray block in the figure. So one of them will end up at the first free spot and want to apply its entry there. To ensure correctness, the hash table is only updated using cache. So in this case, one of the caches will succeed, let's say which is thread two, and inserts a pointer there. But the other cache now will fail. And whenever the cache uh, to the hash table fails, we need to repeat the linear probing process from the initial position to ensure correctness. So eventually, the first thread will also find the next empty spot and insert its pointer uh, over there. So this is how concurrent rights to different keys are handled. Now, if we have concurrent rights to the same key from different clients, like this, which uh, we need to order the, both the operations at a global level. To do this, before committing um, the key uh, entry to the segment store, we have something called an incarnation number. We divide the entire key space into multiple ranges, and each range we assign an atomic counter to, which is called an incarnation counter. Whenever a thread receives a put request, first it um, gets the incarnation number for that specific key range, increments it atomically, and adds this incarnation number entry to the segment store as well. So uh, it would look something like this. T1 may get the incarnation number 101, and T2 may get the number 102. 
And since this incarnation entry now exists in the segment store, we can use it to order operations um, globally. Okay, so now that we've talked about the corner cases, we discuss our final design aspect for today, which is leader election. Within LOLKV, any replica can become a leader, but uh, the new leader might be stale for some threads. This can happen because different threads replicate their operations on different majorities. So in this scenario, the leader, as we can see, has the latest operations for the three threads at sequence numbers 20, 25, and 35. If the leader fails here, we see that either replica two or three can become the leader, but replica two is stale for thread two, whereas replica three is stale for threads one and three. So we have a, a new state synchronization process which brings the new leader up to date for all threads. And before the synchronization is complete, the leader doesn't serve client requests in order to ensure correctness of the system. Again, for further details, please refer to our paper. Finally, let's look at the evaluation for LOLKV. We evaluate LOLKV against uh, four state-of-the-art RDMA-based key value stores, DARE, APIS, MU, and UCA. We use the YCSP workload with different workload skewness and read to write ratios, and the rest of our setup is shown on this slide. Let's take a look at our results for the uniform workload. For uh, the uniform workload, we use YCSB workload A, which consists of 50% writes. On the y-axis, we plot the tail latency or the 99th percentile latency, and on the x-axis, we have throughput. So from the figure, we can see that APIS achieves the lowest uh, uh, latency, uh, throughput and highest latency of all systems. And this is because APIS requires two RDMA writes to commit each operation. Uh, Mu and Ucaron perform better because they require only one RDMA write. And while DARE also requires two RDMA writes, it employs request batching, so it performs the same as Mu and Ucaron. Now from this, we can see that LOLKV performs much better than the other systems. And this is uh, because of two things. The first is we, again, use only one RDMA write on the critical path to commit an operation. And the second being any thread can serve any uh, request, so we're not sharded like other systems. So our scalability is much better, which uh, results in uh, better throughput and latencies. Now, the, uh, the other aspect was that we wanted to handle skewed workloads efficiently. So in order to test this, we use a uniform workload, but uh, among all the shards, we ensure that one shard is more popular than the rest. And on the x-axis, we see the percentage of operations handled by this popular shard. And on the y-axis, we have either throughput or latency. So from the figure, we can see that as the popular shard gets more popular, um, uh, the, uh, the throughput of all other uh, systems uh, decreases and the latency increases because the popular shard is overwhelmed. But in LOLKV, as we have multiple threads to serve the popular shard, our throughput more or less is maintained, as well as the latency. So with this figure, we see that LOLKV efficiently handles queued workloads. So to conclude from uh, the slides I've shown you so far, LOLKV efficiently handles uniform workloads, as well as skewed workloads. OK, so LOLKV is our new low latency, highly concurrent, and linearizable object store. We use a novel logless design, which eliminates the log as the serialization point. We adopt a novel multi-threaded shard design, which enables better scalability as well as makes us more efficient for uniform and skewed workloads. And from our evaluation, we saw that we outperform state-of-the-art systems. With that, I'd like to thank you for attending my presentation, and I'm open to answering any questions you may have. <laughs>